Going one, going twice, no. You're listening to the property pod. All right, guys, welcome back to The Property Pod, your weekly engagement into real estate here in the Hobart Marketplace. I'm your host, Aaron Horn, and I'm joined by the team that are always here with me, Patrick Berry and John McGregor. Always reliable, always on time. Oh, well, let's not go that <laughs> You had to go with the on time thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I, I, I knew you both would see the humour in it. <laughs> it's actually the 30th of... June. June. I was yep. going to say July. I get June and July I know, it's all so the time. And in my head I'm like, June, July, June, July. It's, I think it's because you've got all the other ones that are kind of alternating letters. But yeah, then why would they put two the same next to each other? It's ridiculous. John will have some, oh, the moon aligned at this time <laughs> and, and July is actually the god of thunder from somewhere. Well, how did you know that? <laughs> I've, been, I've been reading your blog. <laughs> No, so it's it's the 30th of <laughs> June and we are kind of about to branch over into a brand new year. Yeah, The new financial year. Which means tax, tax, baby. <laughs> 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 so we know what you were listening to on Spotify yeah. this morning, a bit of vanilla ice to start the day. <laughs> well, it was very icy out there. I had to do yeah. the old bucket water trick on the um, on the front of the car this morning. So, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of sheen on the, uh, on the old windscreen. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so we came in today, we wanted to talk about tax, which is a very dangerous topic. We don't know enough about it to <laughs> yeah. um, bestow our our worldly knowledge upon the people out there. Mm, but we thought if mm. we just brought it up, it might be a way of getting people to think about it. Oh, think about it, yeah. conversation starter, those type of things. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of an awareness thing. And we so haven't had John's brother reach out for ages and tell us we stuffed something up so wrong. So, so it's about it's time. About time. <laughs> I would love to feature on a Lukeonomics thing where it's like people giving bad – um, monetary advice or tax advice. Oh, now and we film and you bloody <laughs> just snip it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we've actually done is we've spoke to the fourth member of the Property Pod team, Nino. He mm. um, has trolled the incident and found some really interesting information for us. And the one thing that I kind of like to, what we're talking about now is that we don't know enough about tax. Mm. Lots of people out there don't know enough about tax and um, property owners who use it as an investment property kind of, you, you think you're all over it, but yeah. 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 So, so I think the first thing we probably need to outline is that we're not experts and you should seek your own advice. 100%. But what we thought we'd do is just bring up some questions or some thought bubbles that you might be able to discuss with your accountant to maybe find some savings or yeah. maybe get better improvements on your position. Absolutely. And it's that obviously speaking within the realms of our um, expertise. And again, that goes back to something we've constantly talked about in this podcast which is building the right team around you indeed yeah exactly john loves the team absolutely we we had that guy from duo tax ages ago you brought him up earlier before yeah he he came on and was really passionate about tax and really passionate about he had so i was like man you made this sound interesting yeah exactly i'm not sure if we can do that today (laughs) so in hindsight we should have reached back out to him (laughs) a thousand percent i can't believe we didn't think to do that <laughs> but anyway, if you're listening, we'll have you on next week, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the whole point is just hit next and you'll actually get a good episode. <laughs> anyway, back to tax, tax, baby. All right. No, so look, one of the stats that we pulled out from, um, from Nino, who's going through some stuff, is that in March 2020, the uh, tax office commissioner, Chris Jordan, revealed that most property inventors – Investors actually nine out of every ten returns were reviewed or needed to be checked off because people were just marking off the wrong stuff. So yeah, it's clear out there that lots of people don't know what they're doing. So it's mm. a it's a fear for everybody mm. that uh, yeah you get it right. And I guess the big thing that people need to like look at is you know what have they what is their rental property for instance in this example made versus what have they spent on it for it mm. to be an investment property? Yeah, that's really with the the crux of what owning an investment property is when it comes to tax is the difference between what you make versus what you spend on it. Yeah, quite simply. Well, it's that element. You want it to be a, you know, a positively, a positive financial benefit for your, to your, to your wealth. Um, and I suppose, yeah, I mean, if it's a case that if it's an investment property that's complete, continuously hemorrhaging cash um, at, the end, at, 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 at the end of your financial year, like, man, is this really working to my plan? Is this working to my plan? So I think the thing with the, uh, um, you know, the problem with what's hap- what a lot of the time happens is um, – what it describes is that with most people doing claiming the wrong deductions, um, obviously they're not either do you know, you could say they're not 
they just don't know what they could claim or, or they're attempting to claim the wrong thing or they're purposefully um, claiming the wrong things in order to try and maximise that uh, return at the end of the year. Mm. Um, and obviously in these environments um, there's these points now where they're, you know, getting a lot harsher. So in order to make – it's really important that you do look at the right things and do it r- properly so that if you do ever get audited, you're not going to get stung in the, you know, stung in the butt down the road. It, it's so tricky. Like some of these things I'm looking at, I'm just trying to um, make sense of myself. Like mm. it's claiming your deductions for properties that are not genuinely available for rent. So that one I don't really have to concern with. But mm. it, whether you're really renting it or not renting it and kind of – playing shadow games there that one seems pretty clear but then it's all this Mm. other stuff where it's kind of um like claiming deductions for loan interest expenses when a portion of the loan was used for private purposes yeah all this stuff is just it goes (laughs) way over my head and then as soon as i start hearing those words about the interest that you've earned i just i get so lost Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like i don't think i'm a silly man (laughs) <laughs> I'm not a smart yeah. man, I know, but I know being, what love uh, is. I, I know what rent is. <laughs> <laughs> I know what tax is. Uh, well, I don't. <laughs> I really don't. I don't. Well, so, like, I okay. actually then got um, Nino to put together, like, what is tax or, like, what is a tax return kind of thing. Mm. So he's given me a detailed um, breakdown of a tax ref- return is a form you complete online or in paper that gets a tax agent to help or, or get a tax agent to help you of how much income you earn and how much you're claiming in deductions. Mm-hmm. Even that blows my mind. <laughs> well, it, look, it's it, it's not you're not alone. Like, there's so many of us, and not myself included, sometimes too, where um, I just put, I've just look. I just didn't want to do my tax return straight away, so just been putting it off and putting it off because it's that oh, it's going to get a little bit complicated, or I don't want to ask the right questions, and it's like oh my god, I, it's old now. Coming to you at once. Well, better get that stuff sorted because that's part of adulting. You know, adulting. Adulting. <laughs> but all right. So, why at school <laughs> were we learning about um, isosceles triangles and learning about sine, cos, and tan? All those silly things that we were doing in maths. Why weren't we learning this stuff? Mm. Why? Why do we get like to adulting and we're just like, I don't know enough about this. <laughs> it just blows my mind. Well, that's what the property pods for, property pods for. Yeah, right? well, it ain't helping so far. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's try to break it down and just pick something really simple. Let's look mm. at like our rental portfolio and what does an investor get at the end of financial year when we sign off at the end of financial year. Well, look, I was actually having this exact discussion with um, a friend of mine whose pro- rental property that he'd owned uh, for quite some time. Well, is 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 primary home that you own for quite a few years is going to effectively become a rental property as of the 1st of July. Now, first off, I think it is important for us to consider what it describes there, which is um, claiming deductions that are for properties that are not genuinely available for rent. Now, what's his property has been vacant for several months. However, he's been living with his partner. However, in that definition, even though the house has been vacant, it hasn't genuinely be, been available for rent. So though he hasn't been living there um, and it's not his primary place of residence, it's still not genuinely available for rent. So, so. the first key takeaway there is if he's done renovation work in that three months, he right can't to. claim those things back. Yes. However, if he had rented it for 12 months first and then had it vacant for a month or two before putting new tenants in and did renovation work yep. to make it ready for the next tenant, yep. then he probably could be able to claim some of those items back. Yeah, absolutely. And it's that, it's that distinction because it's going, okay, from what day – did it become an investment property? And from that day, then it's in. It's now you have a new definition, and you mm. can th- these things start to apply. Mm. So if mm. you've had you know your house for two years, and then it shifts into becoming a, a rental property, not specifically on the whatever date that is, that's when all these things start to tick over. So that's um, there are obviously two definitions of um, cl- uh, claims where it's immediate. And then obviously de- de- depreciation. So that's where you're, you've got a thing that you can claim over time. So I, re- I remember this conversation last time where he was talking about once you put the new oven in and then eventually it depreciates into different value but he has calculators to do. Yeah. Why didn't we reach out to that guy? No, well, so, <laughs> so what depreciation of ass- what the depreciation means is that say that oven's worth $1,000 that you bought it for, you can't claim that um, $1,000 as a deduction. So when we talk about a deduction, it's a deduction in your income. So if, if the if – the, um, excuse me, just flag that. Um, <laughs> so in the end, a rental property, if it's just on a, on the, on a run normally, if it's, you've got the properties under your name, and let's just say you earn $50,000 a year from your job, and then all of a sudden you now have a rental property that you get $10,000 a year from your rent, 
Well, then those two incomes combined to mean now you have a total taxable income of sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So what then in that ten thousand dollars of your rental property is that what the deductions are then is you earn ten grand, but every little expense that you incurred in order to get that now becomes a de- a loss or a deduction. So deductions in addition to the oven could be management fees for us to manage a property for an owner. Yes, that's right. So um, your rates, your water bills that you pay throughout the year. Yeah, well, that were, and so um, there's a whole like a list of immediate ones. So um, I'll just finish that. Like with the depreciation element, is that's like, that's not an immediate deduction, but that's a deduction over time. So um, and so with the immediate deductions, Pat, I mean, it lists here. They'll say um, uh, the advertising costs to find a tenant. Um, your body corporate fees and charges, so if you are in a unit complex, um, your council rates, your water charges, your land tax, um, any cleaning expenses during the course of that year as well, your, gar- your gardening and lawn mowing, so that's the consistent presentation, um, pest control if needed. Um, there's, you know, another instance is your insurances, so both your, your building, your contents, your public liability, your landlord's policy. Um, the other element is inter- interest expenses, so interest expenses is that on if you've um, got a loan to buy that property, and there's obviously interest on that loan, you've got those – the interest is what's the proportion that's deductible, not just the whole mortgage itself. Just no, the so I'm not getting the house for free is what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Damn <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, but see, like as you're, as you're reeling all those things off, it's just like making a pile <laughs> – in my head of just being like, this is crazy. Like there's yeah. no way I could keep on top of this. And and this is where maybe hiring a property manager to look after the property comes in handy. So for instance, with our agency, we can we offer to our owners they can choose to pay these bills themselves or we can pay it on behalf of them if they want to. Yep. And the reason we do that is so at end of financial year they get a um, end of financial year report that has all these deductions listed in one spot. Absolutely. And that's um and, and that's something we discussed with my um, friend as it well and this is obviously something that I set up as well is you know with the company looking after my property well everything just flows through the business because it, you know every expense and that's what the you know it further goes in description is that you do have to have it documented and you really need to have those invoices so it can be matched back to the dollar and so then, for someone like you John who's or constantly losing things. Yep. You don't want to keep receipts for your land tax and your water bills and all that and keep track of them for the end of financial year. Mm. We do it for you basically. 100%. You're getting at. So, and so um, later today when Abby does the close-off for the end of financial year for our rental portfolio of yep. all our properties, all our owners will get a document which is called an end of financial year report and it will show every bit of rent that came in and every expense that went back out yep. and then a net total at the end. Mm-hmm. And so that's one piece of paper that – our owners have to hand to their accountant yep. and that's all they have to hand to the accountant for the rental property mm. if we have paid for everything throughout that year. If John had chosen to pay the bills himself, they'd still get that report but then he'd have to go find all of the other documents mm. and gather them all up to yeah. get to the accountant. So a lot of our owners have discovered over the last couple of years it's in their best interest for us to pay everything for them mm. so that nothing is forgotten about come tax time. Yeah, I guess that's one of those tricky ones because I was just thinking before, like around this time of year I get really excited and then when I'm, um, you know, getting thinking about tax and it's in the forefront of my mind, I'll be keeping those receipts and being like, oh, I'm going to take a photo of all of these and put them in my email and then I'll never lose them or I'll yeah. put them in here. Yeah. After about a month it all just falls apart and you just go back to living your everyday life. Mm, mm. Admittedly I don't have investments, I don't have investment property so it's not something that I think of if that's something that that you're really into, I'm mm. sure people out there would be doing it. Mm. However, it sounds way easier the way Pat's describing the property management team, manage everything and then at the end of it, here's your form, go and – Forward it on. Forward it on mm. and Done. we'll go from there. Done, exactly, exactly. And that, and that's why then, you know, it's with, with two buttons, all of a sudden, you know, 90% of your work associated with your, your property for tax is, is finished. Mm. Um, so – and that's where all those – you'll see all those immediate deductions, you know, come through that statement – that, yeah. the, that the accountants go, yep, done. Cool. And like mm. some of our owners, they're lucky enough to have three or four and some have got even seven or eight properties with yeah. us. Imagine trying to keep all of that paperwork for eight properties individually yourself. Mm. It'd be mm. just a nightmare to keep track of it all. And look, and some people like it, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and I suppose, you know, it's that element too where you, you will find those people that are, will, are thinking, well, if I do it myself, maybe there's other elements that, you know, you, I, I can claim or maybe I can do uh, – And well, this is the thing too where, you know, some people might do cash work for repairs versus actual, um, you know, 
Not that, that we condone cash. Not that we condone it, but, yeah, exactly. but through like, yeah, without it being invoiced yeah, back exactly. to you. It's just, it's, oh, or, 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 they might, or they'll just say, look, or the owner might organise the maintenance without us and then they'll just pay the invoice direct. Um, and then of, like you just like you described, or rather than having that, you know, funneled through the, the rental income to us, like they've still paid it regardless, but now they've just got to keep all those additional records mm. that otherwise could have been collated nice and easily. Mm. Um, and that's where obviously professional management can have a huge... Um, and what a lot of owners also don't remember as well is not only do they have to keep them for end of financial year purposes, mm. but when they go to sell the house in four, five, ten years' times because they will have capital gains tax, which is a whole other thing that they need to worry about. Yep. But everything they've spent on the property during the whole time they've owned it can help minimise that that tax when you do go to sell the property. So mm. I think the more that you can run through the one location, the better. The better. Yeah. Like yep. that way it's just a nice clean record of the entire history of the property from the day you, you made it a rental to the day that you decided to, to, to sell to the let property. To let it go, yeah. And I suppose that – sorry, flag that um, – Brings us to that next minute, like that one where we had the gentleman on before about the Twan. I went and looked it up. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. perfect. Twan. Twan from Duo Tax in Melbourne. Yeah, he was a champion. Yeah, he was great. And 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 that's where I suppose the quantity surveyors are really useful because now if we, we've you know covered off a few elements that um, you can claim immediately, like another one's you know repairs and maintenance, for example. So then it's okay with larger capital works. So that is when if you do a renovation um, or um, so, you, you know, new kitchen or you've had to replace the guttering, which is going to cost several thousand dollars, you can't claim all that in one hit. One hit. What, so, yeah, what do you mean by – what does that mean? So let's just say that you had to do a capital works, which is, a you know, large um, uh, change to the property, which is guttering, for example. Yeah, you so, just said that. I said the same, exact same Exact thing, same right? example. Oh. <laughs> just, 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 I just flagged it because I've got it here. So, Sorry. Uh, no, I like it. Just leave thanks, it. man. <laughs> you just it, said the same thing yeah, and I was just like, same thing. It was like, someone would think this is on repeat <laughs> because it's just gone like, and then the gutters. Yeah, and then the gutters. Okay, so it's defined as capital works used to produce income, including buildings and structural improvements, are written off over a longer period than de- than um, than other depreciating assets. So what the capital works is you, you require to do this work in order to – to maintain that the house in, is an income producing asset. Yeah. Because if the house doesn't have gutters anymore, it's you can't use it as a income producing asset. No one could stay there. So you you're continuously investing in these capital works in order for it to be of a quality so you can it can stay a rental property. Yeah. So <sighs> I tried so hard, I was still listening. I, I well, you could just you, you get rid of capital works and just just put maintenance and repairs. Cool. But but um, that's not just a you know you're not replacing a PowerPoint. We're placing, we're replacing a deck. We're replacing kitchens. We're re- replacing huge, um, huge capital. You know, huge money, monetary expenses. But didn't you say you, you can't use that all and write that all in uh, one yes. big go? Yeah, yeah. So what, what do you mean by that? So That's that where is, I got lost. Yeah, okay, gotcha. So now um, what they're talking about is let's just take, for example, um, you've had to do a big repair to the kitchen. It cost you five thousand dollars. Yep. So if in the instance of a maintenance repair, like you could claim instantly, let's just say you had to replace a PowerPoint, that was three hundred bucks. You can claim that whole three hundred dollars. Is that how much PowerPoints are? I don't know. Um, <laughs> and you might not. I don't know. Able. I'm just asking. That, yeah. That sounded. That's but, expensive. All right, we're getting off track. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to teach you, <laughs> just, and you're being. But just, <laughs> <laughs> but, but just even your insurance policy, that your landlord's policy, which might cost you $400, you can claim that $400 that year. Okay, so that's an instant one. But a depreciating one with that kitchen example at $5,000, it's worth $500 to repair. But each year, the, like the quantity surveyor will say that it reduces in value over time. So, this so the year kitchen is worth isn't five. worth $5,000 next year. It's worth potentially $4,000. Yeah. Yep. So you can claim so much year one, so much year two, so much year three, and for so many years yep. you can yep. claim a little bit each year off the total amount. Yep. So therefore you're not <laughs> – so no, I, uh, yeah, I, get, I, I think this is exactly what happened last time we talked to tax. I just you got stuck. Brain exploded, and I was just <laughs> like, I'll just keep pressing the buttons. So I guess that's the thing. So when you're coming into like the 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 key takeaways are, you know, as you move into the new financial, you maybe could look at a couple of ways of making it easy for you the next year. So first off is obviously um, getting all those expenses if you do have professional professional management through the one funnel. Yep. So it comes out the end. Love that. And then, then next, speak to a quantity surveyor and have that ta- the depreciation schedule organised. It will cost you a bit of money to to do, but then obviously there's going to be a lot of there's a lot more opportunities um, for you financially than otherwise you, you, that you may not have known. Yep. Mm. 
And, and key takeaway number three, probably find a podcast that actually knows what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why. I Like I was like, tax time's coming around, let's talk tax. And then I was actually Look, lying in bed last night thinking like, why did I think this was a good idea again? It's well, like the no. first time we did the show, we did it about the federal election. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, let's choose the hardest way to start a podcast. Yes. Look, I think um, the key thing that John has pointed on is that you need to have your team. And you need to go seek some advice from your team. All that we're suggesting here today is that have some conversations around it mm. and find out to make sure you are getting the most out of what you can claim. Yep. And that's the thing is that, you know, good good, good advice is cheap. Yep. But, you know, I think this is the perfect point to pivot to something that's not on Aaron's notes. What's mm. that? I think we should be talking about Dry July. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of you actually know what we're talking about. Well, yeah, you guys definitely know about drinking and you definitely know <laughs> that for the next month you won't be doing it. So... Uh, I'm not doing it either. I'm, I'm, yeah. Where? Oh no, I am doing dry July. Mm. I will not be drinking for the month of July. Yeah. So we've actually got a team going this year. Um, I think your dad's on it, John. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't know if he's ever done. Okay. Well, he's by Deadline. far killing the rest of us on sponsorship money. So <laughs> yeah. obviously, no one else believes that he can do it because everyone <laughs> thinks it's funny and everybody donating like crazy to him. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see if your old man can last thirty days. It's a oh, very long time. Once once he sets his mind to something, there'll be a challenge. Uh, but I'm I'm confident you'll yeah, do it. So we've got Chris, Martin, Aaron, Abby, and myself so far on the team. So um, yeah, looking to try and raise some money for Dry July. Yeah, look, it's, it's an amazing cause. It's for cancer awareness out there. I know lots of people. Are a majority of Australians, I'm sure we could find a stat that would say the majority of Australians have know of or have been um, affected by um, cancer. Um, yeah, we're kind of battling some stuff like that in the family at the moment, so it's definitely a cause that's close to a lot of our hearts. Um, yeah, we're raising some money and awareness for Dry July. might sound like a funny idea to be like, oh, we're not drinking, but it's definitely a, uh, a really interesting uh, cause, yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, four and four getting behind it, and, and anyone that knows real estate agents know that we drink a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I, a, it's a stressful type of industry to be a part of, and sometimes that and helps. And but I, hey, I, we're going to try as a team to stay together. Yeah, and that's why I do like the the dry July element because it really is, you know, a cause that everyone's. It's almost breaking a habit. You know, it could be you're seeking alcohol for enjoyment, or you're trying to oh. relax, and then or any any myriad of the hundred different ways and why you turn to it. Um, but that's it's like that 30 days will help break a habit if you've been tr- if you've been struggling with it in the past as well. So I think it's a really good cause in that sense. 30 days is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I told Martin I'd never do it again when I did it last time with him, but here I am. So I think, I think the longest I've done is six months as an adult. Wow. Yeah. Um, Impressive, John. So it can, like it, it, it can be done. Are you, all of a sudden you'll find your your skin will look better, you know, look in the, that that happened to me. Your wallet your wallet's fatter and all those things. Of course, once once it ends, uh, it goes back to normal. Good luck. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love to see if in a few weeks' time once, um, yeah, the podcast is kind of mid-July, whether, you know, you're kind of just got the shakes or the anything's DT. happening, the DTs. <laughs> no, you don't drink that much. No. No, look, it's, but, it's a really good cause where, uh, yeah, mm. we're really behind it. We might be pumping it up through the podcast. And if you can um, donate, that'd be really great. We'll be donating $100 of every sale made yeah, in July. That's correct. That, so that every true? sale that we do over the next month, we're going to be putting $100 towards the, the team funding as well to yep. try to boost that up. Yep. And, yeah, we'll see how far we can get this number. No, I really like mm. that. I think that's a really good idea. Um, shout out to everybody out there that is joining Dry July. If you'd like to join along with us, that would be great as well. Um, but, yeah, something we're doing here. Mm. Um, thank you for getting through to this part of the episode because, man, that was a slog. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I come to you guys with the idea of, hey, guys, let's talk tax on the property pod. Well, it, it, shake me. That's the thing is that when we actually have this. Uh, what are you doing, man? <laughs> the, the coffee table conversation with the clients is quite short because it's the, like it's three things and let's go speak to your accountant. <laughs> yep, yep. No, look, reach out to your accountant, keep all your um, things in order and if you need to get a property manager, they'll definitely help you out. No. Thanks for popping the notes together, Nino, and thanks for listening to the property pod. See like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. See you, gang. Okay. Bye.